Hi again. In this presentation, we are going to introduce linear models, both for classification and regression. So linear models are very interesting because they are simple models, easy to understand, and usually very fast to train, so a very good baseline for machine learning. So uh, more specifically, we will give you the definition of what is a linear model in two contexts. First, in the context of regression, so predicting a continuous variable, so in which case the method is called linear regression. And in the context of classification, predicting a discrete variable like a class, uh, in which case the canonical method is called logistic regression. So the name of logistic regression is a bit misleading because it's really about classification. Okay. And uh, finally, we will introduce the concept of nonlinearly separable data, which is the main limitation of where uh, linear models uh, falls down. So to make things more concrete, let's start with a, um, a specific example. So we want to estimate house prices. Uh, so we have this small data set, uh, small data table from a, a real data set uh, publicly available uh, called the Ames housing data set. And here we want to focus on trying to predict the sale price. So here it's expressed in servants of dollars from uh, three input features, three input variables, uh, the growth living area, so the total uh, living area of uh, the house, uh, the year built, and the number of bathrooms. So here I think it's an American data set, so it's expressed in square feet for the, the areas. So we want to find a relationship between the output variable, the sale price, and the input variables. And in the context of linear models, we will use a linear combination of those input variables. So we try to approximate the sale price as close as possible by taking this uh, weighted sum of the input variables. So for instance, if we consider the first line, you take the first value for the first variable, which is this, and you multiply it by 0.1. Then you take the second value, so this, and you multiply it by this coefficient and you add the first two terms and then you go on full bath so one multiply it by 0, uh, 8.9 and you subtract that quantity to the previous sum and finally you also subtract uh, this intercept so in this case it's negative so it's a subscription and hopefully the result will be a good estimate of the sale price so uh, the the magic of machine learning is that these quantities, these weights, those weight coefficients and the, the value of the intercept here are automatically tuned from the training set. Okay, So this is why we call it machine learning is because we learn those coefficients from, from the training set. So to be a bit more specific, we can illustrate it uh, for a simpler case where we just have one input variable. So we focus on the most important one, which is the living area. So in, in the x-axis here, and we want to predict the y-axis, which is the sale price. So again, we have this linear approximation. This time we just have one input variable and we still have this uh, intercept coefficient. So those values here are automatically found by scikit-learn if you, if you, sorry, I went a bit too quickly. Uh, if you import the linear regression class from scikit-learn and you call fit on this training set, so all the black data points here, uh, here X has just one uh, column, which is the living area, and it tries to predict Y, the sale price, on those data points. It will automatically tune those two coefficients, the coefficient for the growth living area and the intercept, and uh, the goal will be to minimize the, the difference between the blue curve here, which is the, the curve that is parameterized by those coefficients, the prediction function of the model, and the expected value at each location uh, in the training set. So the, the red uh, bars here, they represent the error or the difference between the prediction in blue and the uh, observed value on the training set. Uh, so this is computed on the training set, and this is quantity is used to minimize the data points, to the, the coefficients, okay, on the data points. So the, this quantity is called the squared error, and you can actually compute it yourself if you're interested by 
uh, once you have fitted the model, you can uh, compute prediction on the same training set and compare the prediction with the expected value of y. You square those differences and you take the sum. And this is the quantity that internally uh, scikit-learn is trying to minimize to automatically tune the parameters of the model, of the linear model. Okay. So we can generalize this concept to uh, higher dimensionality, for instance. If you take two uh, input variables, so the living area and the year build, you can also parameterize, the, in this case, uh, a prediction function, the, which is represented by this uh, blue surface here, because the, the two inputs are represented here and, uh, and the target variable is represented here. Uh, now we have a 2D plane, and so a 2D surface, still some kind of straight plane. Uh, it's not curvy. And this is the prediction function of the model, and it is parameterized by the, those three quantities. And they are automatically adjusted by scikit-learn by minimizing the red differences between the prediction in blue and the, uh, the black data points on the training set. Okay. So we could generalize this uh, mental picture to uh, a higher dimensional, uh, higher dimensional problems. Uh, however, it's no longer possible to make a graphical representation of this, unfortunately. Uh, so you have to think hard and try to generalize to higher dimensions for, for real problems where you typically have at least 10 variables or sometimes hundreds or thousands of input variables, input features. Okay. Um, so linear models are useful for regression, but they are also useful for classification. And for classification, uh, the canonical method is called logistic regression. So here, for instance, we consider a problem where the target variable y is either 0 or 1, uh, and those are just two integers, arbitrary integers, to encode the uh, two classes, for instance, blue and red. Okay? Uh, y cannot predict the value between 0 and 1. Uh, we, the, the real value, the observations, are really either blue on, or red, or either 1 or 0, uh, but not something in between. Um, so to do to train a model on this, uh, you can import a similarly as, uh, as in the previous example, a class from the uh, linear model package from scikit-learn. But this time we import this logistic regression class. So we we instantiate it this way, and then we can fit it on the data. And once you fit it internally, the uh, the system has found a coefficient again a linear sum. Uh, of the input features multiplied by weights. And uh, those coefficients, they parameterize this uh, smooth function. Um, at this time, it's not directly trying to predict y, but rather uh, be interpreted as a probability of being either red or blue. Okay, So in particular, if you look at this region, the system, uh, the, the model, is very confident. So probability of 1 of being red. Okay, so uh, if for a given x in this region, it will predict a probability of 1 of being red. If you have a, a, a value of x in this region, uh, the probability of being red is going to be very close to 0, so, or uh, conversely, very uh, confident to be blue. Okay, however, if you take x in this region, you both have in the training set, you have, you observe blue points and red points for the same value of x in that region. And so in this case, the model will predict a probability that is close to 0 0.5, for instance, here, or 0 0.3 or 0 0.8 or something like this. Okay. So this is again a linear model because internally it takes the linear combinations of the input features times coefficients and then transform this into uh, a probability between 0 and 1. You can generalize this to, uh, to two dimensions. Uh, so to separate uh, two groups of data points, uh, in this case, it's no longer red and blue, it's orange and blue, but this is the same message. So x1 and x2 are the input variables. And now the, uh, the, the output that we want to predict is just the color of the data point. And the output of the prediction of the model is represented by those uh, straight lines here with different shades of colors. So it means here the dark orange means that if you go on the up and right of that dark orange line, 
you have a probability of being a range that is strongly close to one okay and if it's below this uh, dark blue line then the probability of being a range is very close to zero uh, conversely the probability of being blue is very close to one and if you are in between those lines the probability is closer to 0 0.5 okay so you can again take this representation of a smooth function and you have these flat regions here where you have a probability that is very close to be uh, zero for being red or very close to be one for being red or orange and this is basically the same plane as here it's just a 3d representation uh, of the of the lines here uh, what is interesting here to observe is that the, the line that separate the two groups according to the model is a straight line. And the fact that it's a straight line comes from the fact that logistic regression is a linear model. It takes a linear combinations of the input features. Uh, we can generalize this to three class classification problems and more. So here we have now two groups of data points in the training set with labels. So why now it can be blue, orange, or green, or you can code those values with zero, one, and two. So those are the observed values. And what the model predicts for a given input X is a probability per class. So the, the output when you call uh, predict proba, for instance, on a logistic regression uh, uh, model that has been trained on this data set, will be a set of three possible uh, probabilities, of three probabilities for the three possible outcomes. And so the sum of those probabilities for one given uh, x value is going to sum to one. Okay, It means that the three possibilities are mutually exclusive. You can either be blue or orange or green, but not the combinations of those colors. Okay. Uh, but the model is not 100% sure most of the time, so it can it can be uh, uh, not quite confident. For instance, in this region, the probability of being blue will be very small, but the probability of being orange and green will be equal. So it could be 0 0.5 for orange, 0 0.5 for green, and uh, very close to zero for being blue. Okay, in this region. Uh, it's going to be more green and blue, but not necessarily uh, uh, orange anymore. Okay, so here again, you see that we have segments of straight lines, and the fact that those uh, separators between the classes, according to the models, are straight lines, comes from the fact that the logistic regression is a is a linear model. Okay. Um, so this the this limitation. Uh, at least this, this feature of linear model to, to draw separations between uh, regions of the feature space using straight lines or generalization of straight lines in higher dimension um, can be a limitation. And um, it's usually not a problem when the data is linearly separable. So here you have an example of a, a, a classification problem where the two groups can be well separated by a straight line. Uh, so there is a bit of noise, so it's not completely linearly separable, but it's almost linearly separable if you ignore the, 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 the small noise. Okay. Uh, however, if you take this classification problem, uh, you observe that if you, if you find the optimal straight line to separate uh, the, the two groups the best you can, uh, you will still make significant prediction error even on the training set. So here, for instance, uh, the model will predict a range for all those blue points, so it's a mistake. And uh, uh, here uh, it, it's going to predict blue for those points, and you could argue that it should rather be a range. And here there is also an, another region where it's making a mistake. So even on the training set, we have some error. So the, the, the training error is high. So as we explained previously, it means that we are underfitting. And the cause of the underfitting problem here is the fact that the model, the linear model, is too simple for the complexity. It cannot capture the structure of, of this data set. And so uh, in the context of linear models, it, it means that the data is not linearly separable. So when we face this kind of situation, we have to find uh, new features. So instead of using two input features, maybe we could find another feature. And in this new feature space, maybe the two groups will be separable uh, using a linear model. Uh, 
so this third feature or this additional feature that we could introduce could either be completely new features, for instance, uh, uh, recording another quantity such as a temperature or something, uh, which was not present originally in the data set, or we could transform the original features and hope that the, the transform features will uh, make it possible to find a straight line that separates the two groups. Okay. Um, so just to give you uh, the name of this strategy where we try to devise new features to make the problem easier, it's called feature engineering. And this is uh, very useful for, for linear models. And uh, we will uh, give examples in, in the notebooks. So some take home messages for linear models. So usually they should be the first uh, baseline that you should try on a new problem because they are very simple and fast. And so if they work, usually you cannot do uh, much better and they are easy to understand. If, if the problem is not linearly separable, then you might try something better, uh, more complex. Okay, so they, you can try them for a regression. So we, in this case, it's called linear regression. Uh, and we will speak a bit later uh, about penalized or regularized linear regression. Um, there is also classification using logistic regression. However, as we've seen, uh, those models can underfit uh, in particular, when you have a small number of features and a large number of samples, it's very often the case that linear models can be underfitting because of nonlinear separable data. Uh, so in this case, you might need, if you still want to use linear models, you might need to try to engineer new features uh, and uh, to limit underfitting, basically. Uh, and if your problem has a large number of features, uh, compared to the number of samples, of training samples, then it's very often the case that uh, linear models are very strong baseline. That even stronger models like uh, boosted trees or support vector machines with kernels and this kind of more complex machine learning models, they will not necessarily uh, predict much better than, uh, than uh, linear models. Um, sometimes they will just overfit more but not predict uh, any better. So uh, especially when you have large number of features, you should definitely have a look at linear models. However, they can still overfit, and this will be uh, the topic of the next presentation. Thank you very much for your attention.